Hey guys, it's Will from EDM Tips. Today I'm going to share with you everything you need to know about compression. One of the most important and often misunderstood concepts in mixing, and it doesn't matter which genre of music you produce or which DAW you use, learning how to compress properly is an essential skill. In this video we are going to go into what exactly compression is, which I'm sure already many of you have an idea about, but I'm also going to show you exactly how to do it and when to do it, when to know you're compressing too much and when to know you're compressing too little. And it's going to help you get the absolute best results from your music. Before we go into what compression is and everything else we're going to cover in this tutorial, let's just have a comparison between a vocal that has been compressed and a vocal that hasn't been compressed. So first this is the uncompressed vocal. And now let's listen to the compressed version. You hear the difference? Everything just sounds clearer and smoother and pops through the mix. Which leads me nicely into our first point of today's video, which is what is compression? So compression is simply changing the volume of a signal over time to reduce the dynamic range. Now, what is a dynamic range? It's the difference between the loudest point of a signal and the quietest point of a signal. So if the quietest point of your signal is here and the loudest is here, compression is going to bring those two things closer together. So if you envisage a waveform, which is a bit like that, it's going to make it more of a squashed sausage shape. Now there are a few variations to this, but usually the way it's used is the compressor will make the loudest parts of your signal quieter, and then it's going to boost the entire signal afterwards, which means you can hear the quieter bits more clearly. And this is really useful because it can even a sound out or it can give it more body in the mix. Now compression can be used on separate sounds. It can be used on a bus, for instance, a drum bus where you've got lots of different drum sounds all going into one compressor. And it can be used on the, the final master channel as well. Now a good mix engineer will usually use compression at all three of these different stages. Now most sounds apart from completely prolonged sustained drones consist of a transient and a decay part of that sound. It's really easy if you think of a drum because you get that initial hit and then the dying out sound afterwards or a piano where you hit the piano key and then you've got the initial hit which is the transient and then the sound that dies out afterwards. Now when you're compressing a sound we have to try and get that balance just right between crushing the transient and then boosting up the decayed part of it. Because if you compress it too hard, then that sound is going to sound squashed and horrible. And if you don't compress it enough, you have to boost the whole signal to hear the quiet parts, but then the transients are too loud. So in a nutshell, that's what compression is and exactly why we want to use it. Now, there's not one setting that's going to work for all compression as much as it would be nice if that was the case, because how much you compress a signal will depend on several factors. One is the sound entering the compressor. All sounds are different, obviously. So that's going to dictate how much you compress the sound. The second is the actual effect that you're trying to create. For instance, if you're mixing a country track, you're your compression settings are going to be really different from if you're mixing a dubstep track. A dubstep track, for instance, will have really heavy settings so you can get that really loud sound, whereas a country or a classical piece of music will have much softer compression. And the third factor it comes down to is, of course, your personal taste as well. I'm also going to bust some common myths about compression that I see banded around on the internet and some mistakes to avoid that can ruin your mixes. But I'm going to try and break things down and make it as easy as possible. So without further ado, let's hop into the door and get it done. So firstly, let's go through all of the controls on a compressor and I'm going to explain them to you as we go. So I'm using the FabFilter Pro C2 here uh, just because it's a really nice compressor that can show you exactly what's going on visually as well. So it's going to help this description. But it has pretty much the same controls as any compressor that you're going to find in your door, even if it's just a stock compressor. So let's look at their important parts and I'll explain them all. So you've got the threshold, the ratio, the attack and the release. They are the main controls that you have in any compressor. So let me give you the best analogy I've ever heard to describe these four core controls of a compressor. So if you're playing music in your room and you're pumping it up, the threshold is the point at which you make it so loud that your mum shouts up at you from downstairs to turn down your music. So if you turn it up too loud, it gets to a certain point and she's going to tell you to turn it down, right? The ratio is how much you turn it down by, 
when she shouts up at you. The attack is how quickly you respond to her shouting up at you. So does she sound really angry? If so, you want to turn it down really quick. And then the release is how quickly after she shouted at you that you turn it back up again. So that made me laugh when I first read that analogy on the internet and I think it's a really easy way to remember all of these controls. So with that in mind, let's just loop a point of this vocal and we're going to use that analogy to help describe it. So at this point, our threshold by default is set to minus 18. And that means when our vocal reaches above minus 18 dB, then the compression is going to start kicking in. Now, as we discussed, the ratio is how much you turn it down by. So this is where people can get really confused because you've got this, these ratios here. You know, it starts at 1 to 1 and it goes all the way up to 100 to 1, which is basically limiting. It means that anything above that level is just being completely cut off and nothing is getting above that. But <clears throat> I'll explain the kind of ratios that we would use with compression usually. So 2 to 1 means that when you go above the threshold and the compression kicks in, you are basically halving the volume of everything above that threshold. So if your signal was to go above that threshold by 2 dB, the compressor is then going to make it 1 dB. Now if you turn the threshold to, say, 4 to 1, for example, that's a stronger compression. You know, it's a harder, more audible way to compress the sound. So if you were to go up, say, 16 decibels above the threshold with your signal, then a 4 to 1 ratio would compress that 16 decibels down to 4 decibels, because that's, that's dividing it by 4, basically. And that's what the ratio does. And as I said, the higher you go, the harder the compression. And when you get to like 100 to 1, that's pretty much you know, like, well, some compressors, you can actually have a limiter mode, but it basically is compressing it completely above that point. So where I'm going to start with this vocal is a relatively gentle compression, uh, about three to one, three and a half to one. Ooh, my mind. Ooh, my mind. And it's worth noting before I compress a signal, especially if it's a longer signal like a vocal, I will actually go and uh, try and equalize the, the volume more or less beforehand just manually. Not too much, but you can see here I've actually split this track into two, this part and this part, and that's because this first part was a bit quieter because she was singing more softly. So I've actually boosted this up by 10 dB, um, and I've boosted this one up by 6 dB. So this one's basically 4 dB louder than the second one just because she's singing more softly. Now with vocals, you could actually go in and you know, tweak separate syllables as well, but that's beyond the scope of this video. But I just wanted to throw that in uh, before we started because I am actually working with a vocal today. So let's just lo loop this first part first and work here. Wild electric running through my mind. So you can see at the moment, we're getting about 12 decibels of gain reduction. Now, it would be nice if there was like a particular number that you're aiming for, but again, it really does depend on those three things, the signal going in, the kind of music that you're producing and your personal taste as well. But for this, because it's a dance music track, the compression is going to be harder than it would be for an acoustic rock track, for example. So we want that sound more evened out because everything else in the track is more intense. It would be the same for a rock track as well. So you want your vocal not to get lost in all the other sounds that are going on. Wild electric running through my mind. So we can hear that mind really nicely with the compression on. When we turn it off, Wild electric running through my mind. you can hear this bit really loudly, the second part of mind, my mind. but then it, it just sounds unbalanced compared to the other part. Wild electric running. And this part here, this syllable here, you, you're losing that kind of last trick signal. So if we compress it, Wild electric. Wild electric, wild electric, wild electric, wild electric. That's off. Wild electric. So you can hear the trick louder now because we've compressed the signal. So I hope, hopefully you can hear that difference. If you can't hear the difference, I recommend just listening through to that part a couple of times until you can hear that difference where that last syllable's a little bit louder. And you can use the visual cues, of course, as well. Just look when the compressor's off and when the compressor's on, and it should coincide with what you're hearing. But also listen to it with your eyes closed as well, because then you're going to train your ears to pick up on these small nuances of compression.
Now, when it comes to setting the initial threshold level, it really comes down to, again, what you're trying to achieve. But if you push it so that everything is being compressed, that's going to be too much. But if you push it so only a couple of the top transients are getting compressed, it might not be enough depending on the effect that you're trying to go for. So if you set it to a point where, say, most of the signal is being compressed, say 50 to 80 percent of it's being compressed, that's going to give you enough of your signal being compressed that you should be able to hear the effect of the other settings as you go through. You can always dial back on the settings a bit later, but having enough of the signal being compressed so you can actually hear what you're doing is a really useful tip. And I would actually apply that to any plugin. If you push the settings a bit hard first, you can actually hear what you're doing and then you can always dial it back to the sweet spot. So now we've brought the threshold down a bit, let's look at the ratio. The ratio, again, to be set by ear ideally, but you know, starting off at about three or four as a ratio is a good starting point. But then if you close your eyes, you can wild kind electric, of wild electric. dial it back and and then just kind of listen as it loops and find a sweet spot that sounds good to you. Wild electric, wild electric. And zero, uh, one to one is no compression at all. Wild electric, wild electric. And you can see wild on this electric, visual readout there's wild no compression. Electric, wild electric, wild electric, wild electric, wild electric, wild electric, wild electric. Yeah, so I can I can hear a couple of those syllables ni more nicely now. Um, so let's go on to the attack and the release. And again, attack is how quickly that compression kicks in after the signal goes above that threshold. And if you have the attack really, really fast, it basically cuts off the initial transient completely like straight away. And if you have it really, really slow, it doesn't give the compression a chance to actually kick in. So obviously there's a sweet spot somewhere between them. Now what people will often do, well beginners will often put the attack really really quickly so it kicks in immediately, wild electric, but that wild can actually electric, kind of smush the sound up electric, a bit and just wild electric. get it sounding a bit too mushy. But you know I've seen several videos on YouTube and they'll have a setting between like 25 and 50, but it completely depends on the tempo that the singer is singing at and again it depends on the genre of music that you are producing. So it's a good place to start if you start at about 40 or so milliseconds and it allows the initial wild transients electric, to come through wild electric, and it's a nice wild smooth electric, sound. Wild so if we bring the attack wild electric, closer, wild electric, wild electric, wild electric. it's a more intense, more kind of upfront feel to that vocal. Now that's what I want in this dance music track, so I want this to pop through the piano loop. And this is where the makeup gain is important, because if you're compressing your signal, we need to bring the whole thing up so we're able to compare like for like, you know, with our ears. You can also use auto gain with most compressors as well. I kind of prefer to do it manually, uh, but you can use auto gain as well. Now the release, as we discussed, is how quickly we take the compression off after it's kicked in. Now the key here is if you have it really, really fast, the volume goes up and down really quickly because you're compressing fast and then you're releasing it fast and then it's compressing fast and releasing really fast. And you know, it's, it's not smooth. Whereas if you have it too slow, the compressor's never having a chance to completely come off before it kicks in again. It's easier to kind of show this visually. Um, so if we look at our signal Wild here, we've got a long release, that, that signal is never getting up to this point again. So this red line here is when there's no compression happening. Wild so let's look at that again. In between the words, it never gets up there. So we're actually just reducing the volume of the entire signal. Now the sweet spot is to get it so there's enough room for it to go back to zero in between if it's a vocal, for example, each word, if it's a drum between each drum hit, it's kind of easier to set with drums. But this compressor is great because it can actually show you. Um, and you want to find that sweet spot where it's got enough time to get back to zero without being too fast so the volume sounds uneven. So let's try that. Wild just dial it back. Running through my mind. Daylight slipping away. Yeah. Wild electric running through my mind. Daylight slipping away, yeah. So we can Wild see it's getting back to zero mind. at almost every Daylight syllable. Daylight slipping away, yeah. 
Wild electric running through my mind. And again, because this is quite a fast vocal, you know, there's lots of syllables all put together in a relatively short time. This release setting is going to be completely different from if this was a ballad, for example. Uh, so that's pretty much it. The only other thing to touch upon is the dry and the wet. Uh, on other compressors, there might just be a dry, wet knob. I know you guys already know this, so the dry will be 100% not processed at all. The 100% wet would be fully compressed. Now that's technically known as parallel compression because you're mixing the uncompressed signal with the compressed signal. And it can be nice to feed in some of the dry signal, which can just add some more of that kind of natural character back into the sound, especially if you've heavily compressed it. Oh, there is one control I forgot to mention that's available on almost all compressors as well. Well, all digital compressors at least, not all the analog ones, and that is the knee. And all that means is that instead of the compression coming in immediately when it hits the threshold, when the signal hits the threshold, the knee kind of smooths that out. So if we look at this graph here, or, or, or the display, and we just play our vocal, Wild electric running through my mind. and we'll adjust the knee. Daylight slipping away, yeah. We'll see when the signal hits that threshold, the compression immediately comes in to its fullest amount, whereas with a softer knee, it kind of blends that in. So I usually just kind of leave this halfway. It's a bit hard to hear the difference unless your ears are really used to listening to compression. Wild electric so leaving it in the middle mind. is, you know, it's a good Daylight place to start. If you can hear the difference, by all means, adjust it. But yeah, halfway is usually a pretty good place to start. Now, another thing I do want to touch upon is that you can have more than one compressor in serial. So if a sound really does have a lot of variation, so you can see here, this is a really loud part and then this is a really quiet part. You can have one compressor beforehand that just cuts off everything at this point, you know, at that kind of volume. So here, you can have it with quite a high ratio to bring that down. And then you can have your second compressor to kind of smooth the whole sound out. So let's try that. Let's go to this part and see how we treat this perhaps differently. So we're going to turn off the compressor we've used and we're going to put on an initial one just to cut off that really loud transient and then that's going to make our second compressor have to work a little less hard so, I smile, so, so we get it just so it's hitting that loud one so just that point smile, so I smile, so with a hard I ratio smile, so I smile, so I smile, so I smile, so I smile. And then it, it's very subtle, but we're just cutting off that top transient. So then it's going to be smoother when it goes into the second one. So I smile easily. So I smile easily. So now let's listen to the difference to this vocal when it's uncompressed. And we're going to listen to this with the piano riff going in the background as well. So this is uncompressed first. Take off both compressors. A few vocals are coming through, but we're missing the quiet words. Especially here, you can really hear there's a lot of dynamic variation. So let's just loop that part and listen when we've got the compression on. So just this part. This is off. Massive difference there. Now, because again, this is a house track, I actually want to compress this further still and make it even more of a sausage. So what I'm gonna use is a different kind of compressor. 
I'm going to use a glue compressor, but you could use an analog modeled one um, as well, like this, uh, where is it? The CLA76 is a model of a classic compressor, but I'm going to use this one because it's with Ableton and it's absolutely fine. And for this, I like to put quite a fast attack, so 0.1 milliseconds, a fast release as well, and pretty gentle ratio, and probably about 4 to 5 dB of gain reduction. And then we'll make up the gain as well. So this is off with this last kind of smoothing glue compressor. This will be a good place to hear the difference, actually. So I, Listen to the so I compared to the easily. So we'll just loop that little bit. Listen to that so I come in when we turn this last compressor on. So I, And again, you can use the dry wet knob to just, you know, tone it back a bit if you if you feel it's a bit hard, that compression. Um, so let's have a, a listen to the whole thing. Wild electric running through my mind. Daylight slipping away. Yeah. Feel ready to release that sound. Now let's put on some reverb and delay. Wild electric running through my mind. This is with the compression off. All over the place, up and down. And with it on. Obviously, this is a vocal, so I've done, you know, a few compressors in a row. You probably wouldn't do that for drums. You might just use one or two compressors. Because this is a long signal with lots of dynamic variation, I've used more compressors in a row. But I hope you found that useful, guys. And I want to give a massive shout out to my Accelerator students, actually, who have, well, I think one of them hit the top of the Beatport charts the other day. So I'm going to put a link to his music below this video. And if you do want more professional coaching from me, if you want some one-on-one -on -one time and get your music to a truly professional level as quickly as possible, you can check out my coaching below this video too. Thank you so much for watching. And oh, what, what else am I gonna give you? You can download my mixing guide as well for free below this video. So as I was saying, thanks for watching. Have a fantastic day. And until next time, cheers and happy producing.